What's going on guys, my name is Dimitri and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you specifically how I use the Notion API to sync my Google Calendar and my Notion Task Manager in a sort of interesting way that I don't think has been brought up much on the internet yet. As someone who uses Google Calendar and Notion in conjunction pretty often. I think it's gonna be something that helps me a lot and it's gonna save me and anyone else who does the same thing, you know, a little bit of time in regards to like, if I make a task in Notion or if I make a calendar event in Google Calendar, I would like the other half to see it without me then needing to make it in the other one because well, who likes to do the same thing two times in a row if it's solving the same purpose? So diving into Notion's website, actually, as you can see, we have the new API it came out in may and it's been a great update i'd say something very simple that i can show you is right here actually on my desktop so as you can see i'm a guy who has a lot of things going on um there's there's so much stuff on a day-to-day -day basis and then when you factor that in with my google calendar it's like here's an example of what my week looks like so i'm going to show you in this video how i actually sync up the two of these because i can't tell you how much of a time saver it would be if both sides of the spectrum really were to always be in sync and time blocking for me is a little is a little odd right i not only do it in regards to my day-to-day -day activities but i do the whole blocking situation so like this is when i work or whatever so that kind of stuff and adding things in there like that is not something that is in my tasks but when social events or housekeeping tasks come up, for example, I went and got my new car the other week. As you can see here, I believe it was, yeah, the 26th. So on the 26th, I picked up my 2021 Nissan Versa, right? And then if you go to the Google Calendar for that, pick up your 2021 Nissan Versa. So it's like, you know, I, I have both of these things happen. Is there a way that I can take that new task I put in my Google Calendar when I'm talking to my, my family about like when I'm gonna go pick up the car and just have a drop in Notion? The answer is yes. So how that's made possible is from two different applications and a third that's actually coming to Notion as well. Uh, these two are called automate.io and Zapier. So Automate.io and Zapier are essentially programs that connect into the Notion API, right? And what you can do with them is make an integration so that they connect with Notion and tell it to do things based on certain actions. So what I've set up with these two programs is similar things such as this, but with Notion. So here's a bunch of examples, right? Say you get a um, new podcast upload, which actually, this is a, one of my automations, actually, I'll show you real quick. So when I have a new podcast come up, I have an automated Twitter post. Let me go to my Twitter real quick. So if we go to my Twitter, the last podcast I uploaded was on the June 23rd, right? And this is all automated. So the second it came up on Anchor through my RSS feed, this posted to my Twitter, which is really nice for my content. So this is something that you can do with Notion as well. So say when I create certain types of things in Notion or on Google Calendar, they then can go to Notion. And I have done it mainly one way, but with more advanced and higher levels of subscription with Zapier and Automate.io, I could make it a two-way scenario. So this is what we have here in regards to pricing for both. So both of them give you five free different actions that you can do or what's called zaps and bots. And those are like the types of actions you can do. You can have five set up at any time that are automated. However, Automate.io has many more tasks a month that will allow you to do it. So basically, say you both get five types of actions each per month. Zapier only lets you do 100 per, of those tasks per month. So say I do an automation in Notion, Zapier's only gonna let me do it 100 times. Um, and that's like combined across all five. So you get a little squeeze there. Uh, but when it comes to automate Dido, you have the free version here, which is 300 actions per month, which is much better in my opinion. Um, they even have a better pricing in regards to their their personal plan, which is nice because uh, the personal plan allows for 10 bots, 600 tax a tasks a month, and also gives you multi-step bots. And multi-step bots can make things a little bit more 
um, advanced. And that's something that I'm going to definitely be looking into as well with a lot of the things that are coming up for my YouTube. The free plans are honestly good enough for most people. Like I'm not going to act like it's, it's anything special for, for the pro versions outside of more advanced things. If you're doing very basic stuff, feel free to use the free version. Uh, like what I'm going to show you in this video only really needs the free version. But if you really want to automate some small stuff and if you have the cash flow to do so, and if it helps a business, I think it's really important. There may be a video I make coming up on a, a program called Microsoft Power Automate, which is something that can is another free thing for, for users and for businesses on the desktop version. And it, it's these automations are really important. However, I don't wanna make you guys spend money on things that aren't required. So the free version for these, for the most part, will be a-okay. But going into the actual way of how this works is actually, I think it's best if I show you an example. Uh, first and foremost, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to, let's say this is July 5th, all right? July 5th. And this is interesting because um, this works really well on my phone. And if you have like a nice emoji website pulled up to the side, it actually makes this a really simple process. So for me, the push pin emoji is something that I use for nearly everything, right? Uh, in regards to housekeeping tasks. For me making that car emoji on the Google Calendar, it was because I already put it in Notion and I was being, being a, a little inefficient, right? So... This is something that I use for everything. So you don't even have to do this. Um, you can try to make it so that there's like a, a quick area. You can just pull up emojis and it's very easy to do this. Um, obviously on your phone, it's the easiest thing in the world. Uh, there are different ways you can do that on a PC, but I'm being a little more rudimentary with it. So let's say on July 5th, I put showcase notion tutorial. I paste in the emoji, right? And then I go to change the color to what my usual stuff is, right? So this is my usual housekeeping color, which is this. Then if we go to July 5th on my task calendar, as you can see, it's there. It shows the time. It was at 6.45 a.m. It's the exact same time. And it is in there exactly as I want it to be. So this may, just saves me a step right, of like adding tasks in Notion uh, when they're just on my calendar. And the exact same thing actually is done for me as well when it comes to social events. So the emoji that I use for the social events is like the silhouettes of people emoji, like the, the black and gray situation. So I'm gonna say I hang out with my friends on the 4th of July. I put that little thing in there and it's automatically in there on my Notion calendar, exactly how it should be. So, so you can see this has a lot of functionality and that was kind of where I wanted to go with this, showcasing you what it can do and that every single task, if you, if you categorize it in certain ways like I do on my Notion calendar, you can associate an emoji with it similar to how you would in Google Calendar and then you can sync it up like that. So the same process can be followed in the other way around. And it's not something that I've implemented yet because I personally don't want to use it. But if you go into automate.io, this is the way that it works. You can take Google Calendar and you obviously have to sync these up through the APIs. And the way to do that for Google is, is very simple. It just asks you to sign in. And on Notion, I'll show you really quickly how that works and it's actually showcased here as well. But you go to Google Calendar, new event matching filter. So I have my email for my calendar. I have the emoji that matches to it. And you can do this with text too. Like for example, when I was starting to get into work, I was thinking about having it match with things that like are meetings in my Google Calendar that's like imported from my Outlook from work. but. Outside of that, it's really easy to use this sort of situation. So for Notion and how to connect that with both Zapier and Automate.io, you basically pick the database, which is like the page or like the page database, like my task list event calendar, right? So only the databases with the right access to Automate.io are listed here. And the only ones that, these are the only ones that'll be affected by this, which is awesome, right? So let's say I want to showcase you guys this. This page is not actually what's being changed. So if you see this, it's like share 
and you can invite Zapier Automate.io once you connect it with Notion. If you go on the website, you go and connect the app Notion, it's very easy to do. You go and, and go to apps, right? And on both different applications, you then just search for a new app and you can connect it and sign in and all those sort of things. But then the next step you have to do with both of these is go onto any page you wanna do, click, go to the top right, click share, and press Zapier Automate.io and it'll connect. Now, the one thing I do wanna say is that this is different. Like it looks like this is my calendar, this whole page is my calendar, but only this is technically the database, right? Because, because why? Because it's an inline calendar. So you have to make sure that if it's an inline database that you actually go into the database rather than, you know, just having the page that the database is in be shared because it could get finicky. It could mess things up if you do it otherwise, right? So this is the master calendar that I have and that's great and all, but if I don't actually go in there, you know, it's it's not it's not going to work. So with an inline one, if you ever want to get there quickly, what I just did was I copied the link. I went, let's go to a web browser, paste that in there, and then you can click top right. And as you can see, the uh, automations are already here. So that's that's the nice thing, you know, of having the, the browser logged in as well, because I actually just had to sign in just now and I don't often go into the browser version, but it's it's like, is the browser version useful? In a lot of ways, actually, it can be more useful than having the desktop app because of stuff like that. But it's it's nice overall to be able to do this. So I hope that was helpful in regards to setting things up. There are different things that you can do with an automate.io and Zapier. I didn't show you a lot of them and I'm sorry, but I really want to to give you a taste of it. And as you can see, there there are different things, you know, with the notion you can um, sort of do something similar with, with Notion where you have Notion as a new event matching filter and then it's from a certain database and it has a certain um, parameter within it. And it wouldn't be an emoji in that case. Let's say it's it's something color-coded. Like for me, the other way around would be that the example I had, the Showcase Notion tutorial, a small task would then show up in my Google Calendar, right? at that time to maybe an end time, if I set it so that's the case, right? I said do at, and that would be the end time of the Google Calendar task. And it would make it what it needs to be, just setting up the parameters. That's all you need to do. It's like setting up parameters and then it does it for you. And you know, a lot of this stuff is trial and error, but I at least wanted to show you my one way scenario and that it is possible to two way it if you set it up properly. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.